why are airplane tickets between Canada and China so expensive in March and April? Following the news that China Eastern Airlines China-Canada direct flights have been largely cancelled, many small partners have been paying close attention to China-Canada direct flights, especially friends studying abroad. Currently, many airlines still have flights to and from China and Canada every week, but prices have increased this week, even exceeding 30,000 yuan for one-way flights. On March 18th, I took Air Canada to fly directly from Hong Kong to Vancouver. The low-cost economy class ticket price has exceeded 30,000 yuan, reaching 31,033 yuan. On March 26, I took United Airlines from Guangzhou to Vancouver, and the price of economy class ticket increased to 25,669 yuan. On March 30th, I took a direct flight from Guangzhou to Toronto by China Southern Airlines, and the price of economy class ticket increased to 29,948 yuan. On March 27th, taking Xiamen Airlines to fly directly from Xiamen to Vancouver, the price of economy class ticket increased to 17,018 yuan. On April 1st, take Air Canada to fly directly from Shanghai to Vancouver, and the price of economy class ticket increased to 17,280 yuan. On April 6, take Hainan Airlines to fly directly from Shenzhen to Vancouver, and the price of economy class ticket increased to 14,818 yuan. Vancouver round trip to Beijing, transfer once, take Cathay Pacific Airlines from Vancouver on April 1st, return on May 6, economy class ticket price is 33,719 yuan. If you take Air Canada, the price is 43,341 yuan. The one-way price for flying to China is relatively cheaper. On March 31st, take China Southern Airlines to fly directly from Toronto to Guangzhou, with an economy class ticket price of 19,397 yuan. On April 2nd, take Air Canada to fly directly from Vancouver to Shanghai, with an economy class ticket price of 16,636 yuan. On March 28th, take Xiamen Airlines to fly directly from Vancouver to Xiamen, with an economy class ticket price of 8,875 yuan. On April 6, take Hainan Airlines to fly directly from Vancouver to Shenzhen, with an economy class ticket price of 7,912 yuan. On April 13, I took Air Canada to fly from Vancouver to Chengdu, with an economy class ticket price of 9,438 yuan. According to a person familiar with the matter, as China and the United States are still in a stalemate on the issue of cancelling the COVID-19 flight limit, United Airlines. The plan to increase flights between China and the United States has been postponed for at least six months. The increase in flights was originally scheduled to begin at the end of next month, but this move has been delayed. As the matter is private, the person was not authorized to comment. They added that United Airlines has started notifying affected passengers. Although China has reopened international travel, the number of flights between China and the United States is limited to 12 per week. Only with the approval of the two governments can this number increase, a legacy of restrictions imposed during the pandemic. Although the two countries have been discussing adjusting flight restrictions, no agreement has been reached. United Airlines has now postponed restarting more flights to Greater China until around the end of October. A representative of United Airlines did not immediately respond to requests for comment. According to data from AeroRoutes, a flight schedule database, in recent weeks, American Airlines Group plans to add two flights per week from Dallas to Shanghai from the end of March, with a total number of flights reaching four. Similarly, an internal memo from Delta Airlines shows that from the beginning of March, the company will open two flights per week from Seattle and Detroit to Shanghai, fully utilizing the U.S. flight limit. According to data from aviation data company Sirium, the flight growth of these two airlines is still far below the pre-epidemic level in February 2019. There were 1255 flights from the United States to China, compared to only 48 this month. According to Eretz, the latest flight schedule of United Airlines shows that nine flights from Chicago, Los Angeles, and San Francisco, Washington DC, and Newark, New Jersey to Beijing, Shanghai, Chengdu, and Hong Kong will be delayed until the end of October. According to an email obtained by Bloomberg News, some affected passengers have been notified that their booked flights from Newark and Hong Kong have been affected. By early March, Chicago-based United Airlines will have four weekly flights from San Francisco to Shanghai via Hong Kong. According to data from Vari Flight, a Chinese flight tracking agency, as of February 19, the number of international flights entering and leaving China was 17% of the number before the epidemic. Currently, the United States still requires passengers arriving from mainland China, Hong Kong, and Macau to submit negative test certificates before flying. A Sino-American flight bypasses Russia, According to reports, not only are flights not unified. The requirements of the United States may be further increased, and existing flights cannot be outnumbered by Russia. Once implemented, 
China Eastern Airlines flights from Shanghai to New York and China Southern Airlines flights from Guangzhou to New York will be affected. According to reports, this proposal was jointly proposed by New Jersey Democratic Senator Robert Menendez, Chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and Republican Senator James Risch. The proposal urges the United States government to ensure that international flights departing or arriving from the United States do not cross Russian airspace, and requires the government to strongly discourage American citizens and permanent residents from flying over Russian airspace. There are two reasons for doing this. One is unfair competition against American airlines. After March 2022, the United States and Russia banned each other's flights from crossing their airspace, but other countries did not ban them, especially flights from East Asia to Europe and the Eastern United States. For example, a flight from Shanghai to New York would take about 15 hours to cross Russian airspace over the Arctic, and about 18 hours to cross Alaska. While American airlines can only travel through Alaska, there is a gap in both time and economic costs, resulting in unfair market competition. The second is safety issues. The senator also mentioned security issues in his letter. Taking Malaysia Airlines MH17 as an example, which was destroyed by a missile and killed 298 people, as well as Belarus ordering an emergency landing of a flight flying over its airspace for false reasons in order to board the aircraft and arrest a passenger. The senator said that the U.S. government should take active action to protect Americans from this significant risk and address the inequality that American companies are at a disadvantage in foreign competition. If this plan is approved, flights between China and the United States will need to go around for an additional 18 hours. What is the concept of 18 hours? Previously, the direct flight from New York to Singapore was only 18 hours, which was once known as the longest flight. However, in the future, 18 hours may be the standard configuration for the U.S. East to China flight.